Today we will be moving on with our journey of discovering all the Microsoft Graph Toolkit components. Um, in the last couple of sessions we did over the last four or five community calls, we went through some of the components and today we will be continuing with the people component. So feel free to ask any questions in the chat. I might take them offline after I'm done. Quick reminder, what is the Microsoft Graph Toolkit? Um, the toolkit is a collection of reusable framework agnostic components and authentication providers that allow you to work with Microsoft Graph. So basically, if you're building on top of React, Angular, Vue, or any other web framework you're thinking of, we work with them and we're providing fully functional components that are already connected to graph so it's not you don't have to provide any of the data doing any of the calls we do we take care of that um, uh, for you why would you care about the toolkit first it really cuts on your development time it helps you easily add any ui components that would access marks of graph to your app with just a very few lines of code um, it's beautiful, but it's flexible also. So we respect the M365 look and feel being as fluent as we can in the way that we're designing our uh, components, but we're also allowing you to bring in some customizations around styling, templating, logic also that you might change on top of what we're shipping. And also we're working everywhere. So when you're thinking about the web, it works. You're thinking about Teams, it works. You're thinking about Office add-ins, it works. You're thinking about any uh, SharePoint framework, it will work. So today, component we're going to cover is the people component. People is a way to display a group of people or contacts by using simply their photos or initials. And by default, it will always display the most frequent contacts for the sign-in user. So without any further ado, let's go on to uh, some of the codes. Let me actually, here I'm going to start fresh from here. So we have a simple HTML file that was built. That HTML file is the one we've been using for the last couple of sessions. So I'll um, invite you to go see some of our previous videos that we did on this. Um, and we have already a uh, MSAL provider. The MSAL provider here, the role of this MSAL provider is basically just to provide authentication to Microsoft Graph with the ID of your Azure Active Directory application, the scopes. So what are the permissions that your app will require? and a simple login component to let you sign into the app. Um, something we did not touch a lot in the previous videos, which I wanted to uh, have a little bit of a detailed explanation of this is around the scopes. Each component will have different set of scopes or permissions that it will require. And the best way to figure out what are the scopes that are required, you can always go to our documentation, documentation which is aka.ms slash mgt slash docs. Then it's going to um, go here. You'll be able to open the table of contents and you will be able to go and see all the components. For example, today we're going to talk about the people component. What you will find is always at the middle of the page or towards the end of the page, you will always find all the Microsoft Graph permissions. And it's going to explain which scope will be required in which scenario. If you're setting the group ID, if you're using a group, then you're going to need these permissions. If you're using the user IDs, you're going to use these permissions and so on and so forth. So always have a look at the documentation for each and every single um, component. That way you're going to really have a great experience when building it. So let me go here and let's start with our first example of how we can actually leverage the uh, the people component by just doing a simple people component for people that are trending around you. So I'm going to put it in that div here. What we're going to find here is um, just MGT people with the maximum of users around me, and that's it. No, nothing specific. Nothing is specified here, just 
runs with what we have. So when I'm going to hit save, and now we have this simple people component right here. And you see that I have five persons that are very close to me that are trending to my users, but I also have plus five. So it means that we did not load all of them. I could go here and change it to eight, for example, and automatically it's going to load the right, uh, the right folks right there. Something that is great, we have so little space in these avatars that what we can have by default is when you hover on top of somebody, you're going to get the full person card as um, uh, built on top of it. So that's really, really cool. Now, you might also want to do the same thing in a way to describe people that live in a group. So for example, here I'm going to add an MGT person or MGT, sorry, an MGT people with a specific group ID. This group ID should be a group ID you get somewhere, maybe using a graph call or even going to your Azure Active Directory setup and find the actual ID of a group. And now I'm going to put a show max of 10. And here, when I hit save, you're going to see it's going to go and find all the users that are in this specific group. In this case, it's our US sales group. So here, let's say I want to see there's a max of 10, but I only have a max of three. The same thing will happen there where you're going to have a plus sign happening right after. Now you also have um, a way to identify not by group ID, but maybe by user ID. Maybe you have a way to select different users. We're going to see that in a later uh, session uh, around our uh, people picker. But here, for example, you can specify user IDs, an array of user IDs. So this ID here and this ID here, and I want these users to show up in my um, in my control, just hit save, and now I see these two folks that are right here. Now, what can we do also? Well, something that is super useful, especially in these situations, is let me go back here and let me open up teamsofmarksoft.com. Teams is where your presence will be indicated. So it could be really useful to bring in the presence of somebody inside these things to, to know if they are available right now. So now I'm logged in as my own user here. And in a couple of seconds, it's going to show that I am green. So now that I can go back here and add a new component, a new component, again, I'm going to paste in this, again, the same kind of HTML around it, but I'm going to use the same people, uh, MGT people with the show presence to true. So here it's going to look around me all the users that are trending for this current user, which is me, and but show the presence. If I hit save, now you see that Seb is green. It means that that user is currently available. You can start a chat with that user thanks to uh, the capability provided by the person card. And the other ones, they're all offline because you know I'm not running as many profile on my, on my machine, but if they were available, we could see them right away. Maybe you don't want to have the, the, the hover card because the hover card also brings a lot of information. So how do we want to limit that? Well, there's a way to set up the person card to be none. So when I'm going to hit save here, when I'm using the MGT people with the person card to none, now I don't have anything, but what shows up is the name. So we're all, always making sure that from an accessibility standpoint, everything is well covered. Let me maybe zoom in a little bit here. I think it's going to be a little bit better for you all. Um, something that is also really interesting is sometimes you want to specify a group of people that is not a group, that is not a list of user IDs, but you have a path on graph to do things. Like, for example, direct reports. So what I did here is I used the resource property. So you can point to any user resource endpoints, in this case, slash me, slash direct report. So what it's going to do here, it's going to highlight all of my direct reports that are all basically all reporting to Sebastian. So when I hit save, you're going to see that I have three different direct report. There's Raul, there is Stan, and there is Lydia in this case. All of this without ever really writing any line of code, right? So you all have this part of the MGT people stuff. 
Now, something you might want to do also is do some code that would fill in the data of this component. So for example, let me add this component here. So here I have an MGT people with an ID so I can reference this people right there. So let me do the following. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna do a little bit of JavaScript. In my JavaScript, I'm gonna use a method called load manager. The load manager is a function that I'm gonna write in one second. That load uh, manager function is the following. So let me just paste that in. What we're doing here is we're validating, thanks to MGT, we always have the, the state of the current connection. Are we logged in or not? I can always get an authenticated graph client that was provided when we did the initial login. Then I can go in and say, hey, I want to find my manager. And I want to find the actual direct reports of this manager. And on my people manager ID that I used a little bit earlier, this one here. I'm going to set the people on this. So here you see we have a dot people property that now just appeared that allows me to bring in the direct reports that value. So basically what's coming from back from graph or it could also be coming not just from graph, right? It can come from any API that you have on a third party source or um, a, a public REST API. Then we're going to hit save on this. Automatically now you see, I'm the only one that actually reports to that to my manager. So now I can have this data showing up right here. So it really kind of provides rich um, um, capabilities because now you can fill in the data yourself, not just using Microsoft Graph to fill all of the data. The last thing that I wanna show today is some of the really, really impressive capabilities we have around templating. Maybe, you want to have something else than just the face of somebody to be shown. So what you can do is you can build a people component with custom templating. So how do you learn about it? All of the documentations we have always highlights an area here that provides custom templates. So basically here, you can override any of, of them, including the default one. The default, so it's basically the list of person. So what you can do is to build something that looks like this, where you say the following. Let me go back here and I'm gonna put it in the code right here. You say that in my MGT people, that doesn't have any, and you could have any properties here. My default template, I wanna have a UL, so an unordered list. And for each person, you can have a way of referencing and looping through the data. I wanna be able to loop in an MGT person, I'm going to have um, a, a title. If the display person, the display name of the person is Megan, I'm going to say, look, it's Megan. And if not, I'm just going to display the regular display name, the job title, and the department. And when I hit save on this, now you see how I was able to loop through all of these components coming directly back from graph and build my own display on top of it. So that's really one of the biggest value of the graph toolkit where it provides default uh, components, but also customized components like you'd like to have them. So now just go back to slides for a couple of seconds. Um, would love to highlight some of the resources that we have, our repo, our docs, our samples, the playground, the learn modules that we have. And on that, Brian, back to you all. Seb, so thank you so much for this. Always love the in-depth uh, overview and demos and other great stuff that you're sharing on this. So really appreciate your time showing the uh, NGT today. Awesome, thank you.